The dream scenario of upgrading the storage in your own Mac without having to pay Apple's exorbitant price tag isn't dead yet. Well, older Macs used to be upgradable with a simple $9 adapter and an NVMe SSD, Apple has been making it harder and harder. Starting in 2016, MacBooks are now using soldered storage, and this has spread to the desktop as well. But now the pendulum is swinging the other way, as all of Apple's non-all-in-one desktops feature removable storage. Released in 2023, the new Mac Pro has user-upgradable storage that you can actually buy directly from Apple, and the new M4 Mac Mini features removable storage that will hopefully be upgraded in the future. But there is another Mac that gives us a preview as to how these upgrades might go, and that is the Mac Studio. When Apple introduced the Mac Studio in 2022, they gave it removable memory cards, but when myself and others tried to swap them around and upgrade them, we didn't have any success. But a lot has changed in the past two years, and a new product from a company called Polysoft aims to make user-upgradable storage for the Apple Silicon age a reality. It's really an incredible undertaking, and Polysoft had to completely reverse engineer Apple's storage cards. But the result is a relatively simple user-upgradable storage solution that costs a fraction of what Apple charges. So today, we're going to be upgrading this 512 gigabyte Mac Studio all the way to eight terabytes. Getting to the storage modules in the Mac Studio is not that difficult. First, we'll cut through the adhesive ring that covers four T8 screws on the bottom plate. And with that removed, we'll expose the power supply. Now, this is held in place with four screws immediately on top, but there are also two screws hidden down below that connect the power supply to the logic board. Once you remove those, there are two connections to the board itself, and the power supply can be removed. And then there's this internal frame piece, which has screws around all sides. Do keep in mind that the one nearest to the power socket is slightly different, so set that off to the side. And with that, we can remove it. That's really all you need to do. We now have access to the two storage modules. Now in this particular Mac Studio, which is 512 gigabytes, we only have one module populated. So by removing that one screw, we can compare it to the replacement module. Now I know what you might be thinking, are we 100% sure that Polysoft didn't just yank these out of Mac Studios and send them out to me because that looks identical. But nope, that's just how well they were able to reverse engineer and reconstruct these modules. But we need to explain why the module like this is necessary, because this, frankly, looks a lot like an SSD. But if you actually compare it to a normal NVMe SSD like this Samsung 980 Pro, there are some key differences. Let me peel off the sticker and we can get a good idea of the chips on the board. Those two black chips, that's the NAND. But those other two chips are crucial because one of them is a DRAM cache, which makes SSDs a little bit faster, but the big silver chip is the key difference. That is the SSD controller, and this is a Samsung Elpis S4L V003. It's actually a five core 32-bit ARM chip, and it allows this SSD to function as a single module. The output here is a PCI signal, and the data is all contained and controlled on the SSD itself. But the modules in the Mac Studio don't have those controller chips or DRAM chips. This is purely just an interface for the NAND. Because Apple Silicon is itself an ARM SOC, so the controller is just a part of the M1 Max. These NAND modules are basically just an extension of a hardwired SSD architecture. So you can't just switch them around as much as you would like. It's a little bit more complicated than that, but before we explain how it works, a quick word from today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by the Anchor Mag Go wireless charger stand. With their latest and greatest Qi 2 powered charging pad, enjoy 15 watt ultra fast wireless charging for your MagSafe compatible phone. Charging an iPhone 16 Pro with Anchor Mag Go is 10 minutes faster compared to other leading 25 watt chargers and twice as fast as the typical 7.5 watt wireless charger. And thanks to an effortless internal swivel mechanism, Mag Go wireless charger can easily rotate 360 degrees. The mechanism is designed to be as effortless as possible, and it sounds like rotating the bezel of a dive watch or the knob of a safe. 
and that means switching between vertical and standby mode for charging is super easy, and it doubles as not only a fast and convenient charger, but a beautiful phone stand as well. It's perfect to have in your kitchen while cooking, by the couch for enjoying TV, at your desk when working, or on your bedside table. Its sleek and minimal design can complement any setting. Plus, the head can tilt from 20 to 90 degrees, allowing a ton of range of motion as well as charging AirPods in the 90 degree rotation. This thing is a must-have accessory for any part of your home, so to learn more, check out the link in the description down below. A big thanks to Anchor for sponsoring today's video, and now let's get back into it. So getting back to our upgrade, because these NAND modules don't have any logic built into them, they have to be installed in a specific order. The port on the right that has blank PCB underneath it is what was populated before, that's slot 00. zero. The other slot, which does have components on the board below it, is 01. And the actual modules themselves are numbered because it is extremely important that they go in the right spot. In fact, when I installed the 8 terabyte modules this first time, I actually put them in the wrong way, which really messed up the next step. Which is, of course, to restore the Mac and install Mac OS. So we'll plug the Mac Studio into a MacBook using the Thunderbolt port closest to the Ethernet connection. And on our second Mac, we're going to be running a program called Apple Configurator 2. Now, when we boot up the Mac Studio, because these NAND modules are completely blank, the computer is going to automatically go into DFU mode, which will show up on the MacBook. And then it's as simple as right clicking on the Mac Studio icon and choosing Restore. That's going to download the most recent version of Mac OS, rebuild the system on these new NAND modules, and we should be good to go. Except that we're not, because remember, I put them in the wrong way around, so this failed a couple of times. Now I thought that I could correct this error by just swapping the modules and trying again, but that actually doesn't work because for whatever reason, these Macs are very, very particular. So what ended up working was putting the original 512 gigabyte module back in, restoring that with a fresh copy of Mac OS, and then taking that out and putting in the new storage in the correct order once again. And just like that, we've got an eight terabyte Mac Studio. And by upgrading from 512 gigabytes on a single module to eight terabytes on two modules, we've dramatically increased the speed of these SSDs. These things are unbelievably fast. So it's pretty crazy to imagine that this is an aftermarket upgrade. I mean, I am honestly in awe of the amount of work that went into this project. On Polysoft's Kickstarter page, they revealed that in order to perfectly replicate these modules, they had to sand down every single layer, millimeters at a time, to measure every single trace and circuit and, and mark down the components that were soldered onto the board so that everything could be perfectly recreated. But they didn't stop at reverse engineering. They also made improvements. The Polysoft modules feature enhanced overvoltage protection because a frequent source of dead NAND modules in Apple Silicon products is overvoltage just zapping the chips, not with these. And because of that enhanced durability, Polysoft will guarantee the lifespan of these SSD modules for 140,000 terabytes written. But uh, between you and me, they can do a lot more. In fact, I kind of want to touch on this topic because when we talk about SSDs and upgrading, you'll oftentimes come across people who are frustrated with Apple for using these non-upgradable components because they fear as you use the machine over a number of years, you'll actually wear out the NAND. But I really don't think that this is a concern for pretty much anybody. And neither does Gilles over at Polysoft because he actually sent me over one of the test Mac minis that they've been using. And that thing is reading at 0% drive health. Because if we zoom in down there, you'll notice that this Mac mini has had more than 10 petabytes of data written to its SSD. That is far beyond the expected lifespan for these NAND modules, and it is way more than you are ever going to use, even if this is your daily machine for 10 years. But I know what you're probably wondering at this point, and that is, how much does this all cost? Because Apple charges $2,800 
for the eight terabyte storage upgrade for the Mac Pro. And if you wanna upgrade a Mac Studio from one to eight terabytes, that's $2,200. And obviously you can expect that given the proprietary nature and the amount of work that went into creating these storage modules, getting an eight terabyte upgrade is not going to be as cheap as just going on Amazon and buying factory NVMe SSDs. But I was surprised to learn that Polysoft is planning on offering these on their US store for 799 euros. So significantly less than half the price of what Apple charges to upgrade from the factory. That is remarkable. And things will get even easier with the Mac Mini because the eight terabyte configuration of the M4 Pro Mac Mini still only uses a single storage module. The very weird looking new storage card in that machine can handle four two terabyte NAND modules, whereas all of the previous eight terabyte Apple configurations required eight one terabyte modules. Now, do I wish that Apple would use a normal interface and not build the SSD controller into the SOC and then create this whole mess in the first place? Absolutely. But given the parameters of the way that Apple Silicon has been designed, we know that that's not gonna happen. The best that we could hope for is that Apple were to somehow offer these modules for sale on their website. But even that would be more expensive than what Polysoft has come up with. So as far as I can tell, this is it. This is the solution. You can buy a Mac Studio, upgrade it after the fact for less, significantly less than it would cost you to just buy it from Apple. So I am just in awe. The fact that it was this easy for me to do this upgrade really goes to show how much work went into making this product possible. So if you wanna support Polysoft, their Kickstarter is now closed, but they're hoping to start accepting orders very, very soon in early 2025. So I'll have that linked down below. Make sure to like, bookmark, save this, save their website, come back to it because this is a truly, truly incredible development. And I'm, I'm really hoping, I'm really hoping that this is something that's gonna stick around. I really would be, it would really be a shame if Apple starts integrating the NAND onto the logic board in these Mac studios. This is really going to save the long-term usability and cost effectiveness of these machines. So, Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. And I hope you found this project as exciting as I have. Make sure to get subscribed, leave a like down below and let me know what you think of this and I'll see you in the next one.